the uh, the common for the inputs went to the negative and the positive of the inputs went here in the top to the positive this part is done what's remaining to do we still have to connect our inputs so for our inputs we are going to have all the wires we discussed before and in order to recall how these are going to be connected give me a second I'm gonna bring the paper sheet and here it is so if you take a look here on the list here was exactly the order every switch where does it go so the switch one which is this one here it goes to the input zero which is the closest one see switch one input zero switch two input one and so on exactly following line by line this and we know which of them is going where because we have the colors okay so we're going to keep it here and uh, what do we actually need we need to figure out how long these wires have to be you see how long these ones have to be to reach exactly all the outputs okay so if we just preserve a certain reserve just in case okay to make sure that whatever happens in the future we're going to be covered okay we're going to keep a reserve so then we cut them somewhere here because i repeat we left them long at the beginning we didn't know from the beginning how long they should be but you cannot cut two times so you have to be careful when you cut because you can only cut one time done so now guess what all these wires in order to be placed on the screws we have to put some fair rules on them as usual we're going to place or to pick up the smallest ferrules we have in our little box and uh, you'll also remember that even for the little box it was on the list of the uh, bill of materials so what was on the bill of materials it was the box with ferrules together with the crimping tool okay so now we pick up the smallest ones we have we have four we're gonna pick up the red ones because these are the smallest ones we have okay so we have eight switches they are gonna be connected on eight inputs then together with a black wire here from the sensor and this one we know in advance where it's going to go so this one is going to be placed somewhere like that on the input number eight so we were very close with the wiring we just have to cut a bit of excess from here okay so for this one it's going to be easy because the wire is a bit thicker to place to place a spade instead of a ferrule on it okay so this is going to help a bit better for the connection. So we we'll place a ferrule here for the remaining black wire. Remember the black wire is the actual output of our sensor, okay? Good. So now we take care about the ferrules on these very thin wires, okay? Here you have to be careful because the wires are very thin but all the cables is regardless what kind of cable we'd have used it would have been the same problem okay so sensitive wires because they are thin we take them one by one we want to just strip out the insulation on each of them because otherwise we won't be able to place the ferrules you never place the ferrule over the insulation because you need a ferrule not only to keep mechanically in place 
the wire, but you also need an electrical connection. So you remove it from here. We pick up again the small ones we have. And once they enter, yeah, they are a bit too big. So let me pick up just smaller ones. So we need some smaller because in the moment you place a ferrule, it doesn't have to come over the insulation of the cable. If it does, it's too thick, okay? So, one is here, you check it, it doesn't come out, okay? We cut the excessive wire, one is done. Next one is this. We pick up another one, we place it here. So we have to be careful, very thin wires, okay? Squeezed. We remove the excess, cut it off. Done. We have two done, six remaining. Okay, next we're going to place is this one. Let's do it. Squeeze it. Next, it's going to be this one. We pick up another one. Crimping tool. Squeeze it. Remove the excess from this one and from the previous. That's good. We pick up another one. So when you put the ferrules, of course, the order won't matter. It only matters in the moment you put the wires on the appropriate inputs of the PLC. Until then, there is no problem. Also, another little detail. You don't squeeze over the insulation, but only uh, on the metallical side of it, because otherwise, if you squeeze it on the plastic, you're going to damage it. So be careful when you place the crimping tool. It's only on the metallic part, not on the plastic. Okay, so we remove the excess. Just a couple remaining. We're almost done. As you can see, it takes a bit of patience when you do all these things. But that's the process to follow if you want to have your PLC functional. Now, I think we've reached the last one. Let's see if it is true. We placed it here, the crimping tool. We squeeze again. There is almost no excess. Let's take a look. All of them look like done. Good. So now, we take a look at the list. So, the short orange is the fourth switch. That's the input zero. So, the orange. Here, the input zero is right here in the top. We're going to the first, the ones in the bottom. So, what is number one? Number one, input number one is the white orange. So, we look here, is right next to it, the white orange. This is going to be the number one, okay? So, that's the one you place here. We need a screwdriver. So, right now, because everything is prepared. So the number one was the white orange. The number three now is going to be the green. Okay, so what you're looking for, you're looking for the input three. So you go here, input zero, one, two, three, is the white green. So you pick up the white green, this is the white green, and you place it right here. Done. Next, I'm looking for the input five. Input five is here, white brown. White brown, we pick it from here. It's going to be right the next. Done. 
And now we look for the input 7, which is the white blue. White blue is right here. So this is going to be the number 7 right here in the bottom. Okay. So easy now, because we only remained with the even numbers in the top. So we come back from 0. We wanted to put it first. It was the orange wire. Then we look, this was the input 0. Then we have the input 2, the green. So we look for the green. It's going to be right next to it. The green. Very good, it doesn't come out. Input 4 is going to be the brown. So we look for the brown. It's just coming. And we're going to look for the 6, which is the blue. That's it. One remaining is the blue. You put the blue here inside. And surely then we have the wire coming from the sensor, which is going to be the number 8, which is also in the top. It's the next one to it. Right here. So... At this moment, there are no remaining wires around. Yes, we still have to use some tie wraps to make everything looking nice and much nicer. And the only remaining wire we need to do is this one. This is the power cord, okay? So for the power cord, because we prepared it before, be careful where it's going. These contacts are both in the bottom line voltage and neutral, so one at a time, and take a look how close they are to the other contacts. This is why it's absolutely required to use appropriate connectors, like in this case we use the spades, because we don't want these wires to touch each other. So guess what? Before we're going to be able to make everything nicer. All the wires are connected. We still have to put two screws here for the bracket of the sensor, and everything is going to be done. If we just take a look, cleaning out a bit our disk, the only thing you're looking for right now is to have no remaining wires outside which are not connected. Okay? So, the thing we want is to place all the wires properly, like this one here is going to come on a clamp. Maybe this one is not tight enough, we're going to pick up another one. Let's see how this one is looking like. We're looking for a better one, we have plenty of them right here. Let me look for a better one. This isn't good. This is too big. This may be perfect. So, pick up this one here. And remember, we prepared somewhere here a hole. You have to look for it. Okay, yeah, once we found it, then we pick up our electric screwdriver and we look for the appropriate screw for that somewhere here in the box okay and we'll be able eventually to place our screw in the hole and looking where we marked already not too long ago exactly like that okay so right now we have the power cable coming in and take a look now in the moment i'm going to want to use the switches because everything looks like a bit in the way this is the reason why we still have to use some tie wraps okay so what's going to be the next step after we're going to put the tie wraps everywhere 
everything is going to be tight, but you have it already connected. So guess what? I'm going to make a summary. The video number two was how your trainer would look like. Okay, so now it's very close to that. The number seven was go for the bill of materials and take a look what do you order. We ordered all these because all the parts are right here. And the next step to that will be to check it. So by the time soon we're going to check if this one is well done, I'm going to put the tie wraps to save your time. Thank you very much for the patience. See you next time. Bye-bye.